Hello and welcome today to this uh, 4i lab uh, of and the process we are going to demonstrate for you is the rapid prototyping process. Okay. So, let me just comment a little bit about what this rapid prototyping process is and how it uh, helps in uh, uh, augmenting the industry bringing into uh, sort of micro features or micro parts. Okay. So, the rapid prototyping is about sectional printing of material. It is also known as three dimensional printing. Uh, the whole idea is that if there is any complex feature or shape as a CAD file which is available, uh, the, uh, the system tries to section that particular CAD file into small elements. Okay? And each element is being deposited by means of uh, plastics which are typically two in kind. One is either polycarbonate or um, uh, ABS plastic. And uh, this particular machine has the capability of handling on the plastics. Either, uh, although in the current, uh, term, uh, current domain of technology, there exist machines which also do the same with metals. Okay? So, they are called fusion deposition modeling or metal fusion deposition systems. And they are used for non-strategic parts, particularly things like let us say coat hooks or you know uh, aesthetic furnitures, etc. Uh, made up of metals. Okay? So, the advantage behind 3D printing, uh, this area is also known as layered manufacturing because you are manufacturing layer by layer. And uh, the advantage behind such manufacturing processes is typically in terms of the saving of excess material that you otherwise incur in other contact machining processes where there is a lot of um, waste which is generated in forms of chips okay? or even in other forming processes or associated uh, let us say casting processes which are primary manufacturing processes. There is always a tendency of uh, formulating a layer which is eventually removed. Okay. So, in this particular application, the layer deposition process, the advantage is that such uh, uh, savings can happen in terms of uh, obtaining a direct surface finish without performing any other machining process after this process has been done. There are several process, uh, there are several uh, you know, uh, uh, shapes and sizes which have been fabricated with rapid prototyping. This right here shows a part of a horse saddle. Now you can see this is a horse saddle. Okay. So, here for example, uh, this actually is uh, sort of you know uh, the way that a person uh, and customizes his requirements uh, for riding horses etc. So, everybody has a different uh, physiological shape and therefore, it is needed that uh, particularly something like a saddle should be able to uh, customize to the particular user uh, which is there. Okay. So, not only the process is highly economical in terms of material saving because you are just depositing rather than this is a material build up process or a I would say a uh, uh, surface uh, machining process rather than a bulk process which is uh, subtractive in nature. Okay. So, this material is an additive process, but apart from that the main advantage of this process is that you can highly customize uh, the parts or the features to the taste of the customer and you can make very complex shapes which otherwise is not doable uh, with uh, these different machining techniques which are around. Okay? And uh, in a way what happens is that once your CAD file is designed irrespective of whatever is the complication which is involved, I will just show you for example, uh, the, uh, what I mean by complication. Okay, this is a crank shaft okay, of an automotive. You can see the design and you can look into the kind of complexity which is involved in designing such process. Typically, this is used in the automotive industry and uh, the way you generate it using forming processes. But here you are basically uh, depositing and making a scaled prototype or a model uh, through which you can probably uh, formulate the next uh, step okay, uh, which can be used for die manufacturing for that forming process to happen. Okay. So, one advantage of this kind of a process is because of the complexity of the shapes it can handle it can be used as a intermediary for some of the primary manufacturing processes also. Okay. So, in a nutshell what I am trying to say here is that there are a lot of advantages associated with rapid prototyping. One of them is of course, the high level of customization, another is the ability to handle complex designs or parts, a third is a lot of material saving because it is a layered model and there is no secondary material which is wasted in the process and then this can formulate an intermediate process for final primary manufacturing processes like forming or casting where probably you have to do the mold development or you have to do the die making. So, a uh, some kind of a prototype is needed okay, in order to envision and design uh, such a system. So, having said that, 
the question comes how this uh, layered deposition model works. So, as I told you the first step is about making a CAD file and sectioning the CAD file into slices or pieces. These slices could be close to about whatever the resolution of the equipment gives in this particular case. And uh, as I told you this uh, machine handles two different equipments that is ABS as well as PC. So, for the ABS plastics the minimum size of a slice which is available here is 125 micron or 0 0.005 of an inch. Okay. And uh, uh, the, uh, the basic raw material for this process comes as a roll. You can see this is a uh, wire roll okay. and this is what the basic raw material comes as. And this wire is fed from a very small nozzle, uh, which actually is able to uh, move in a uh, x y plane with the information that it would have the coordinate position information which would have from the CAD file. So, supposing now there is a sectioned layer of such a complex part, I showed you a part can be as complex as this. So, probably I have made a small section of this somewhere here and I am actually seeing what are the coordinates of that particular section and defining the tool path. So, the nozzle would actually move in that path and try to uh, maneuver itself by dispensing uh, this particular plastic here by heating it up to its melting point. So, the nozzle is typically heated at 300 degrees Celsius in this case, so that it melts the plastic and then the plastic flows across the nozzle and it is going and walking across a tool path which is generated into the overall feature size and it is depositing that layer of 125 microns. So, once this layer is complete, it is dried up, the next layer is deposited and so, next layer the information will again come from the CAD file on the basis of next slice, which the CAD has uh, originated on the uh, basic file of, a, of the design of the drawing. So, here uh, is a very interesting technique, let us look at the machine a little bit. Let us actually open the system up. So, as you can see here, the, there are two parts basically of the machine. One is the controller uh, uh, part and also the material feeding part. The rolls are now currently in position and they are fed in the system and the controller here is uh, actually indicating several different aspects like what is the support uh, material, what is the model okay? and then there is a vacuum pressure and other pressures which are indicated. There is a small toggle switch here at the corner here, opening which would generate a toggle switch would be operational here as I showed you only when the machine initializes itself. So, there are several processes which are happening here after the controller has been switched on and one of them is basically to auto home or auto position the dispenser unit or nozzle okay, in the XYZ plane and also it does several checks and balances at the beginning. Uh, so, that the machine can be completely initialized for the next run. Okay. So, we will have to wait for a little bit until the cursor here comes to unlock door and at that point of time we can actually open the door. You see the light has been on inside the chamber where the rapid prototyping can actually happen. Okay. So, the first stage of this machine would be related to setting up of this machine. We will go back on the computer and try to make a CAD package and try to mesh it in a particular manner with all these specifications where uh, a file, uh, a machinable file can be created for this system and then this file would be transported uh, in a soft manner into this system and uh, the machine path etcetera would be predefined. So, all what we need to do is to transport that file and then set this machine on and forget about it, so that the part can get manufactured inside this uh, oven uh, or the part, uh, the part containment which is there in the machine. So, we want to now do this auto home. So, we just need to enter for doing this command and you can actually see now inside if you have a look at it the stage is going up and uh, there is a position of the nozzle with respect to the stage that is happening within this particular machine. Okay. So, that you can have a home position for the uh, work piece with respect to the nozzle okay, within the, the machine system. So, it is still homing x y gantry and uh, the z stage. Okay. So, it, this process will take a little more time. You can also actually see right on the top here is the dispensing nozzle which has come up and it is now trying to position in the x y uh, direction okay, once the z is defined by the work piece and then it will be all about the way that the nozzle will be dispensed and the correct tool path would be mapped as per the CAD slice which would come. Uh, inch by or you know uh, few hundred microns by few hundred microns 
as you construct the part, the final part. So the controller here, as uh, you are seeing for the RP the machine, after the homing of the XYZ has happened, stage has happened, uh, shows a lot of options like build job, operator control, model status, maintenance, and so on and so forth. Each of these has a certain meaning, and I will describe these along the way as we do the machining process. However, once uh, we want to just actually first clear the stage with the existing whatever is lying inside, okay, from the last run, okay, and then basically try to prepare the stage for this particular run. So what we are wanted to do is to sort of go into this uh, operator control, which is the second option here, which I can use the cursor key to go, okay, and then enter on this operator control, which takes me into another uh, menu, sub menu, which says unlock door, load, unload, so on and so forth. So I'm going to again enter because there's an unlock door option which is there, okay. And then it goes to another sub menu where again there is a simple unlock door here, okay. And uh, I'm going to actually uh, sort of um, start this and this enters or this actually is able to open the door. We cannot uh, leave the temperature on for a long time because this actually is the sheet, the mylar sheet, which was from the last run. I'm going to remove this mylar sheet and put uh, our sheet here so that this becomes a new run actually of the process. The oven is actually getting heated up to about 119 degrees Celsius. Okay, so it's a little risky to actually at this stage uh, touch the sample surface, but you have to just uh, ensure that the sheet that you are posting is actually at the very corner okay, of this particular thing and there is a guide there which actually ensures that it is at the corner. Once it is done, you can close the door back. Okay so that uh, now things are in place and the next step that we want is to actually go back to the CAD software in the computer station and be able to process a particular file so that we can transport the file here in a soft manner and start and initialize the machining system. Okay, so basically now, as I told you in the last step, we demonstrated the machine. We said that it's really about a CAD file and how you can slice it into different pieces which ultimately would define how the tool moves or the tool path would be defined in that manner. So here uh, in this particular workstation, uh, we would like to actually slice a CAD drawing into pieces, that is number one. Number two, there is a huge issue that supposing this is a part that we want to manufacture using RP. Now we will have to somehow suspend it in a manner using supports so that the whole part can be fabricated. And for doing that, the question is that how the support should be kept in a minimalistic manner. Uh, where uh, later on that can be cleaved, there can be a parting line from which uh, the main object can be separated from the support and the support actually is the most hollow part with as less material as possible Okay, in comparison to the probably the object which is more solid in nature. So therefore, uh, there has to be a provision associated with the machine where how to handle the part by keeping it at a certain inclination or maybe keeping it parallel to the ground with some kind of an angle so that the whole part can be getting created okay and also about what are the dimensions how the CAD file which has been designed earlier has to be transported those issues have to be sort of catered. So today we are going to do the same so with our FDM Titan machine that I showed in the last illustration there are two different uh, softwares which uh, come with the system one of them is called Insight okay and Insight version 9.1 which is actually used to define the layering okay and also define the tool path so one issue is how to slice it into particular uh, sections another issue of course is how to define the tool path so both of these will be done in this manner and then uh, there is another software which is called uh, the control center 9.1 version which actually further illustrates how uh, the object has to be placed in the overall mylar sheet that had been shown in the last step and if there are parallel objects to be placed, then how many objects would be there, which at a single go of the machine would be able to build up the job, etc. And uh, you have to optimize the layout in a manner so that as many independent components can be developed together, uh, that would typically give the yield of the process. Okay. So if the components are higher in that manner, the yield is also higher in a way. So that layout, that layout of the final uh, placement of the jobs in the XYZ stage is given by the second software control center. Okay, so we will do this later. The first uh, version, of course, is the inside where we import and scan and try to section. Okay, and so let's look at how we handle it. This is the main screen of the software. So we actually go to the file menu, and uh, in the file menu, we actually 
can open up a file. So here, I, what I have done is in the interest of time, I have actually made a CAD file earlier or borrowed it from some source. And uh, typically, this CAD data has to be saved as a .stl format for uh, enablement of this insight version 9.1 software to be able to read it. Okay, so therefore, the STL file has to be somehow opened using this insight software. We open uh, the, ins uh, the uh, we, we go into this desktop and then there is a folder which is there through a drop down menu okay and then there is a crank final uh, position okay and there is a small part which is there you will see which we want to build using the system okay so we open this file and transport this back to the scale so it is not scaled we have to scale it uh, because there is uh, typically a confinement volume which would be defined by the bed size of the stage I think I had mentioned it earlier that the bed size in the case of FDM Titan is about close to 16 inches times of 12 inches times of 14 inches. So that's about the size of the biggest part that can be accommodated within this uh, particular system. And I also defined that the minimum layer size that this system is able to resolve is about 125 microns. Okay. So having said this, the parts appears to be in inches and so it cannot be accommodated within this and they are asking us to convert this STL into millimeters. Just for the sake of demonstration, we are going to do that this time because it's going to be a micro part. Also, it's going to give an illustration that how the micro systems can be fabricated using this particular method. Okay, so we are going to select this model and the model automatically is now translated and opened in the inside version 9.1 software. Now here, there, is a, there are different aspects which we need to consider for uh, varying uh, the, uh, the different dimensions. So this is not a very convenient way of locating the object because naturally if you build the part like this, there is a tendency of the object to fall down or something like that. Okay. So we want to actually locate it in a manner so that it is more convenient and we can very easily separate it from the remaining portion. And so I am going to actually make the front portion of the part here as the bottom. Okay. So I am going to actually now see what is the bottom. Okay. Take this up and then take this cursor all the way to this portion. So this comes on the bottom and the part topples. Okay. So now you can see the part has toppled and it has lied down on a flat surface which is actually more appropriate for uh, the purpose of doing RP or rapid prototyping. Okay. So now there are these questions of what is the slice height etc like for which I would like to set up this system. So for slicing it the first thing we need to control here is actually to do the machine setup. Okay. And uh, you basically try to configure the modeler here in a manner. Uh, so that you can define what is the layer thickness etc and what is the nozzle that you have to choose. Uh, we have to remember that there are about four nozzles in this system which has been de delivered or specified by the manufacturer and they are classified as uh, four different types starting from T12, uh, T10, T12, T16 and T20. Uh, each of them has a different orifice diameter because ultimately if your slice side has to be more naturally the dispensing rate also has to be more for the uh, the, the tool to actually be able to carve the object out. So if the nozzle is slightly higher in diameter in that case the dispensing would be faster and therefore it can go to a higher layer thickness. Okay. So it all is defined by that layer thickness that how the nozzle selection etc. to take place. Typically there are two different materials as I told you earlier that this equipment can handle. One is polycarbonate and another is ABS plastic. So when you are talking about ABS there are different layer thicknesses even which are available. Okay, and there are, uh, you know, the, all the nozzles including uh, T10, 12, 16 and 20, all the grades of the nozzles are being used in that category. In the case of polycarbonate uh, system is a little less flexible, so there are only two layer thicknesses which are able to uh, get catered and uh, one of them is about 0 0.01 uh, of an inch and another is about 0 0.07 uh, of an inch and uh, there are only two different nozzle sizes which has to be used. So in this particular uh, drop down menu, uh, you can see there are different aspects given here. The first is called the modeler type. So let us actually see there are different machines which the manufacturer has. So typically ours is a FDM Titan T1. So we have to do this as a selection. Incidentally, this is also set as a default selection in the software. So you need not worry about it. You can keep that as the default value which the software takes. The different materials again. So in this case, it is polycarbonate, but there are ABS materials. There are, you know, variety of different even polycarbonates, okay, which are available. Uh, in this case, we want to choose a simple polycarbonate PC. Okay, so it is demarcated by PC. So we are going to take this up. Okay, now my model uh, automatically the model material color is defined as white in this case. And uh, then the question of support material comes. 
So as I told you that if there is a complex shape like this and you want to position it over a certain surface, you have to give a support to get it standing. So most of it is in air and you can actually build by using layer by layer fabrication approach. Okay. And the support is very critical because this is a wasted material. Later on you have to remove this material and the material would be removed as if it is a parting line and it is coming out of that. Okay. So here, in this particular case, you can see the, uh, the support material being defined by on the polycarbonate. So the option that is being set up in the software is that if there is a PC part, typically the support will also be of the PC. Okay. So the PC support is defined here. Although you can change it probably by going into the, um, you know, the setup, the setup of the software. But at this time, we want the material to be same, so we are selecting PC support. Then, you, if you want to really invert any build materials, the answer yeah, we, we don't want to do the invert build material option. Cut. So the the invert build material option actually is uh, particularly when there are more than one materials to be selected. Unfortunately, our machine is not capable of handling this option or selection of multiple materials. And particularly, if you want to deposit something which is like you know, a layer by layer of two different polymeric structures or maybe three different polymeric structures, the option of invert would come in more handling, handle. Uh, there is a slice height option which is kept here. Now you can see there are two different slice heights. One is 0 0.007 of an inch and one is 0 0.01 of an inch, which makes this about close to uh, about two point, uh, about point, about 250 microns, okay. Uh, and uh, we want to select the low, uh, the, the thicker slice height because in the interest of time, we want to complete this fabrication process earlier. So we are going to build this slice 250 micron by 250 micron. One layer would be 250 micron. And that's how the whole slicing would be done in the uh, insight uh, package. Okay? So it's essentially a slicer package of a CAD file that we are talking about. And automatically, if you see that if you select this point 0 0.01 uh, option, automatically T16 nozzle is selected, which means that uh, this would be able to handle and dispense the 250 microns layer. So T16 is probably a slightly thicker in diameter nozzle which is existing in this particular case. If you add selected point 007 as uh, given earlier here, then you will automatically see that T12 is being selected automatically. That means a lower size uh, orifice nozzle is selected in that particular case. So it is very obvious that you know the software is quite friendly. I had to laminably um, work in a manner so that it actually uh, you know, uh, tailors all these systems. Finally, we make it okay by pressing on this right uh, button here. So now you can see the the text box which comes here on the top is mentioning FDM Titan T1 slice height of 0 0.01 uh, model of uh, T16 tip to be used, a polycarbonate part and a polycarbonate support. All these options have come here which shows that the machine has now accepted the various different options associated with this system. Now, the question of slicing comes into picture and I would just like to illustrate a little more of how the component is placed So, and the styling, how the styling would be happening. So you have different options here on the right side of this particular system. You can see there is a part interior style Okay, and if I just click down on this drop down menu, there are three different options namely solid normal, sparse and sparse double dense. Okay. So what it means essentially is there are two different options this machine has. One is that it has a honeycomb layout structure which is sort of a uh, lesser density structure and then there is a flat plate structure which is there. So the tool may move in like a honeycomb manner, the tool may also move in like a layer by layer. Okay. And uh, the solid normal would mean that we want the bulk to be equally dense okay, and it may be depositing layer by layer or maybe even the tool path even if it is like a honeycomb like structure would be so close to each other that they would be considered to be one whole. Okay, so this is the densest form which is available. There are different other options which are there namely sparse which would mean that this is typically sparse when you talk about supports etc. where very less amount of uh, material is deposited and the gap between the materials are very high. So it is like a packet of cardboard, a corrugated cardboard. Okay, where there is a honeycomb kind structure and then there are two layers which are uh, giving the toughness or the strength to the whole sheet. So support can easily be done in that manner because support is not to be used for any future uh, applications. The support is only a temporary sort of dismantable uh, structure which is only because you want to support the, uh, the object to its place to build it. Okay. Uh, so you can actually in this particular case select the solid normal because it is a real part, it is a crank and we are selecting the densest 
and uh, then you have a visible surface style so there are two different one is normal and another is enhanced so we will select the enhanced option here which meaning that the surface would be quite uh, integrated and the surface would have very good topology okay there is a support style again the support style can be just basic uh, support or a smart support so let me just illustrate what it means a little bit supposing there is a object like this and you want to place it on a certain angle okay in order for the rp system to build it layer by layer when it does it there is a question of support which comes into picture so one support can be just simply orthogonally placed like this another support can be at a certain angle which is able to still support the weight of this guy because you have to calculate when the cg of this person or the cg of this particular object is within the periphery of the support okay so if supposing the cg is within that support then it will not topple and that's the basic idea that you don't want the part to be toppled while it is being made so you can skeletonize the support material in a manner so that it can do its job by at a certain angle also okay so this is called a smart support which which actually saves the material so one option could be to just give a thick grill like this in a perpendicular manner another can be to go like this make a certain base size and then from there go at an angle and be able to support it so that the overall cg is still within that base material okay so this is uh, the way that the support is designed i think you probably understand philosophically how the support uh, would be able to manage and the idea is the support should be minimalistic as possible so in this case we will do the smart support so we'll actually select the smart option here okay so the automatically the software will calculate that the support is not um, uh, uh, much of the material okay wasted and then of course you have a system mode which again is in you know, no fine uh, system and the normal so we'll select the fine option because the system has to do a good job in making the integrated surface quality of this part by depositions and we have kind of done <coughs> at this level by setting up all the parameters for the slicing so let's look at how the slicing happens so if i press this option right here you can see that the system slice is available now you can actually go up uh, and you know you can see each individual slice being made in the software so each slice has now a thickness of about 250 microns that's the beauty of this whole process okay and uh, what i would also like to illustrate here is that uh, once this slicing is made you can actually also look at the independent slices by these options here on the left corner where you can go from the top end okay and then with a the page up page down option you can actually keep on varying this and see what are the various layers which you have to deposit and in fact this also mentions what is the tool path to deposit that layer okay and finally you will see that the whole surface is being constructed based on that okay and uh, then you can also do it simultaneously from the top surface as well and uh, you can go up by doing the page up okay in a similar manner and uh, that's how typically you get all the support so here again coming back to the same option i can just uh, there is a option here with the uh, all slices shown together in a patch which will re reinstate back the whole sample or the piece okay uh, in the system and so therefore this is how uh, tentatively you can look at the slice plot so when the slice plot is done and the question of defining the tool path comes into picture so the other option now we have once we have actually done the slicing we have to create a support system here there are certain holes etc which are you're not able to see because of the intense slicing but you can see there are certain holes etc which has to be created okay and therefore there has to be a support within them where typically the density would vary etc and there can be easy cleavage okay so that uh, the support can be later on taken off to create that hole in that particular dense structure so having said that let us actually go to this uh, other option here which says support so create support for the current job so i'm going to just press click on this and now the software is going to create supports here so here you can see that there are these yellow uh, lines which are actually reflecting what are the support media which is there there are these supports which are made here the supports which are made on the periphery of the object okay something like this so you have built up the supports here and then finally we want to actually find out that within one such section what is the tool path which is getting created and the tool path is reflected by this green uh, uh, symbol which is uh, actually reflecting the zigzag motion of the tool path within such a domain and i want to create the auto tool path so the software actually now tries to compute and create a layer by layer tool path so that you can easily look at by going to the various layers how the tool paths are varying and you can see that how the uh, different layers have been uh, the green 
actually represents the tool path. Uh, so, you can see that how the different layers are having a certain tool path defined where the nozzle would actually do the dispensing action. Okay. And typically that is how the whole system is based on. So, this is typically the, the support structure as you can see it is much lesser uh, in terms of the density of the material because it will be like a honeycomb kind of a structure. The distance between the two um, dispensing points would be much more okay, in that because this is something which is uh, in any event going to be sacrificially removed and the material has to be as low dense as possible. So, that we can make lesser losses than is possible. So, therefore, this is how actually the whole system is uh, made. So, let me just recall what all steps we did it. We opened a CAD file in the dot STL available in the dot STL format. Then we tried to size it down to the volume of the box which is 16 times or 14 times of 16 uh, inches cube in our system FDM Titan. After doing this uh, uh, fitment of the component within the volume of the box, we did various options to it. First of all, we tried to define the material, we wanted to define the slice height okay, and the tip size, these things were selected. Once that was selected, then we are kind of ready with the next step which is the slicing option. So, we go to the slicer command or slicer menu okay, and then slice it into these 250 microns. You can see the slice lot coming out. Uh, by going to uh, the logo here in the uh, top left corner which says from top to bottom you can actually look at various slices, see if they are interfering with each other, is there a problem in the tool path etc, in, in, the, in the slice etc. And normally there is no uh, such problem because the software is a highly error free uh, slicer uh, which has been developed. And uh, then you can also uh, give the various material texturing or patterning by mentioning whether it is a solid normal or whether it is a uh, uh, sparse or sparse double dense kind, uh, kind of a layout, uh, which automatically means that you know you may vary the densities of various zones, making it corrugated in some places and uncorrugated if you need. Here in this case, we wanted the whole model to be made out of a solid block with uniform strength all through. So, we have chosen the solid normal. Okay. We also talk about the visible surface style and also the finesse with which the machine would deposit and also give a support style which would save off the material. Remember we did the smart style in this case which would allow the material to be minimalistic for doing the supporting action of the component. So, once all these things are defined, we then try to <coughs> see the or, or, or give the, uh, the, the support structure of the material. And once the support structure is also defined, then we do the tool path. So, once the tool path is planned, as you saw that the material had a denser tool path than the support structure, which means that the support was much less material just only intended to support the material off, which would be parted away later in a non-useful material. Once this is done, the file is complete. We can save this file looking at the complete illustration here okay, and save it. Uh, and going to the save option here. So, when we save the current job, it will automatically be saved off at the same place, okay, just uh, this new folder, the same location, just beneath uh, the, the file that was initially extracted as the dot STL file. Okay. And so, therefore, we will just save this here. Uh, of course, there is some overwriting existing job in the same name. We have to just do that overwriting here, so that the job is now saved as a dot uh, CMB file, which would be later on able to get extracted by the other version of the software, which I actually told you at the beginning is this uh, control center. Okay. And uh, this control center is a software which would now fire particularly the job all the way to the tool. Uh, so, before starting this also, I would just like to uh, sort of do some settings in the internet protocol, because this machine here, the computer is connected to the FDN Titan through a certain uh, LAN protocol okay, and uh, this LAN protocol has to be initiated for this particular PC. So, what I am going to do is to actually go all the way to the network connections here, okay, open the network, open network sharing center and then go all the way to the local area connection network here and then enable or disable certain properties. Okay. So, what I am going to do is to go into the properties here and select this internet protocol version 4 by virtue of which it is being set. So, we see the properties here you can see the machine is preset in uh, the IP address 172.28.21.42. This is the IP address of the machine. So, this protocol has to be initially defined so that you can whatever you do in the CC 
the control center here would automatically be operated online or it will be sent online to the FDM Titan. And once we do or once we are through all this process, we'll again go back to the machine and see how this job which now got queued up in the machine server or the machine's controller would be able to uh, do the printing, the 3D printing in the machine itself. So here again the system is very easy, we just insert the particular CMB file by opening the crank final which had been had done before. So this is selecting this particular file. So when we open it now you can see the crank final file has been placed exactly at the center stage okay, of the FDM Titan. So you may decide to uh, make several versions of this copy or put different parts together or lay out you know, in a conducive manner so that you know you, you have the whole area being exploited. You remember every time the tool has to deposit it has to go back to its zero position or home position. So it is a better idea to do parallel processing by parallelly printing many parts together. And so here the idea is to be able to sort of take this you know feature and uh, uh, make something where you can have multiple of these features okay together. So you can actually make a copy of the same okay. So you can make a copy and you can say that you want three copies you know. So the same thing would be copied like this okay and then you can place it one by one you know if you want to do that way so that you have many of such items. If you had multiple items in general I mean all the parts may be uh, different parts also you can place like this and make an array okay. So the purpose of this uh, control center really is to uh, make minimalistic effort on the part of the dispensing unit there within the FDM Titan so that maximum printing can be done in the stage altogether. okay. So it makes it from a serial to a parallel process essentially. So once this is done I would just like to sort of remove you know some of the uh, things that I had made I just want to print only one for the sake of clarity okay. And you can actually rotate it, invert it, you can actually uh, you know select this particular part here and you can rotate to any particular direction okay. I would just like to prefer the orthogonal direction here in the interest of the printing so that the tool path is saved for quite some time. Every time it positions back to the XYZ is a lot of work for the tool as well. Okay. So once this is done I think I would just like to <coughs> build the job okay. and uh, there is a build job menu which is here. So the moment I click it the job is now almost ready okay. and uh, you can see probably that the job is in the queue already. Okay. So you can see that there is a pack slash crank final admin okay, which has actually been started at uh, uh, 15.02 hours on today's date that is 18.09.2014 and the estimated build time is given here to be about 47 minutes. Also what is important for us to look is that what is the machine loading at this time. So you already saw the material confinement I am going to illustrate this again that there are these material canisters which are the initial raw materials those wires which you have to feed in. So there is actually a calculation done by the machine itself which talks about how much amount of material is left here which is about 86 inches cube okay, in the model canister. And the support canister has a material of about 37 inches cube and the amount of model and the support materials which are needed are also mentioned here as 0 0.407 inches cube and 0 0.038 inches cube. So typically you have to understand that these two which are needed should be lower than the material which is available. Okay. So once uh, this condition is met I think we are all set to do the machining operation which we will see in the next illustration. So here now you know you can also in this software after looking at the queue you can look at the systems view which gives you an idea of the time you know this is going to take about 47 minutes. So uh, the position here really shows the start time it is about 2.10 right now in the day you know so you can actually get this so it is going to start at 2.10 and complete at about close to uh, you know somewhere beyond 3 you know something like that. Now uh, because there is going to be a heating time, there is going to be a cooling time, the actual printing time is about 47 minutes but there is going to be a pre-processing time which is needed for the controller to be set in so that the total time duration that the whole job would take is near about close to 340. So it is about an hour from which the job would be finished. So all these details can be described on this particular system and it is very helpful for the user so that he can actually process and plan how much time. Uh, you know the machine will operate and when it needs to be done. So once this is done I think I will just simply close this particular software and we are now machine able to go to the workstation and 
So basically now, you know, I just like demonstrate what happens in the controller of the machine. The uh, sliced part has already come and it has been queued online to this machine here. If you just look into the controller, the screen right here says build job. Okay, so there is an option called build job. Down here are a set of keys where there are different controls which are available. Uh, if you want to escape from a certain command, you just press this escape button. If you want to go into the command, you just press enter button and then you can actually go up and down with these cursor arrows and then needful would be done in terms of parameter setting later on. Okay. So we just enter the build job menu. So once we do that, you can see that they're talking about build next job and then they are saying crank final. So this is the job which has been queued to the machine. I'm going to build this job now and the moment I press the menu key here, you will see that first the stage would go all the way to the initial position and also there would be a setting of that dispenser nozzle to one corner which is the home position for the nozzle from where the printing would start to take place. So I need to just do this build next job E crank final. The moment I enter it, uh, now you know they are saying need all four canisters present so I you know the, the, the job can be done by two canisters because as you saw that the PC support material as well as the normal PC which was there was having volume wise much larger volume in comparison to the need which was there to develop this particular job. So I just go to the continue option here and just bypass this. So now you can see that inside the machine cabinet you have the auto positioning of the dispenser tip and then slowly the stage is coming up all the way to the point when the initial dispensing will start. One thing which is very clear here is that the tip has gone to its home position and uh, we had also defined our uh, job in that particular pocket only so that there is not much motion of the, uh, uh, the dispenser to be made with respect to the stage. So once it is all set up, uh, there is an option here which says demo bounding box. Okay. So if you go back to this particular controller here, you see there is an option which says demo bounding box. All it means is that when I'm going to press this demo bounding box, it will show the domain within which the printing has to be done on the surface of the 3D printer. Okay, so I'm going to just select this particular operation here, do the enter, and you can see that there is a domain the tool path has gone inside. So the domain which the tool path has gone inside, the moment I enter demo on the, you can see that there is a square domain which the tool dispenser is going. Uh, this is kind of the domain where the workpiece printing would be actually done. So now I just continue it, so go to the next option and continue and enter it and now the whole auto calibration activity in the machine would be in automatic mode and the whole printing would start happening, okay, where there would be a dispensing and writing of the particular shape on a slice by slice, okay, on the Mylar transparency film.